gotta do, gotta be where God wants me to be. Nothing else matters except for His will and His way. I made up my mind, I will follow Him always to my destiny. Good morning. And welcome to Woman to Woman with Tammy Tubbs. I am so elated today that you've joined me on this segment. You know, God has really positioned me in a place to be able to bless you, not only with my testimony, but with the women across the world globally who are just empowering you to live beyond what you thought you would never, ever be able to see. Now, today, this is a very sensitive subject to my heart. I have a lot of uh, people in my family who um, are diagnosed with diabetes and I just really believe that God wants us to live long and finish strong so this particular segment we're going to talk about eating healthy I have my special guest here with me Miss Ellen Easley Wallace she's a registered dietitian and she's going to share with you ways of how you can eat healthy not go cold turkey or anything of that sort but ways that you can in, um, actually implement quality foods and nutritious um, diets into what you're considering healthy, going to McDonald's, that's a no-no. Um, eating fried chicken, that's a no-no. So we're going to teach you on today how to prepare your foods properly, and she's actually going to do a great meal for us on our second segment for, on our show. So please welcome with me Miss Ellen Easley Wallace. Hello, Ellen, and how are you? Hey, Tammy. Thanks so much for having me. I'm doing great. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited that you've joined me. You know, upon coming to Mississippi, I learned that Mississippi was number one. Number one. Not number two, but number one in obesity, not in one area, but two areas, adults and children. Now, that was a shocker for me because growing up, I remember as children, we were busy. We were outside. I was a tomboy. Uh, you know, I was climbing trees. I was fighting with the boys. I was out there. You know, we were creatively doing things with sticks and fighting, playing basketball. We were active, so we were burning calories. Nowadays, technology has substituted, you know, the activity and our children are suffering as, as you know, as a result. So what do you see on a daily basis, you know, just with adults and children with obesity? With obesity. I see every day, I see families just struggling and suffering from the consequences of obesity. And I think you, you targeted a, a huge point with Americans have gradually shifted to a more sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We watch more TV now than we've ever watched. Mm -hmm. We play more games and video games and computer things now than we ever have. And we also have a less healthy diet than we've had in years. Yeah. And it's very important for us to get back to why we're doing what we're doing. And just like we were talking about before the show, mm -hmm. our bodies, our temples, and we need to treat them as such. We need to yes. treat them in a healthy way. And I see everyday people who are being diagnosed with diabetes. Mm -hmm. I work with a diabetes project, which we can talk about that too. Yeah, please do. Um, I work with a diabetes project, and every day I'm seeing younger and younger people diagnosed mm -hmm. with adult onset diabetes. And we're seeing kids at 8 and 10 diagnosed with a diabetes that normally we never see until yeah. we reach 50 and 60. I actually um, was talking to a mother and her three-year-old. Her three-year-old actually has been diagnosed with diabetes. That was astonishing. I was like, are you serious to think of a child that young? So just tell us a little bit, what is, um, if somebody says, I'm diabetic, what are they specifically saying? Right. Now there's two or three, there's a couple of different types of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So we have the juvenile onset diabetes. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, this is more genetic. This is our young people who typically um, are, you know, fairly young, but can be my age. It's still a diagnosis. Um, and it's not as much of a lifestyle factor. It's when your pancreas gives off none of that insulin that your body needs so much. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the shots and have the pump. And generally, we see this diagnosed in young children. Uh -huh. And then you have gestational diabetes, which is in pregnancy. Sometimes a woman will get pregnant. Um, if anyone's ever had a baby and you know you go to the doctor and they have you drink the sugar samples and test your sugars. Definitely. Now the third type is type 2 diabetes and that's the one we see a lot in adults and that's when um, there is a genetic component. We know it runs in families. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of risk factors for type 2 diabetes. Um, but also lifestyle factors do play in here. 
excess body weight causes us to be at increased risk of diabetes, especially excess weight around our middle section. And that's where a lot of women, you know, that's the older we, we like get, that's it. where that weight sits right here. And yeah. we don't want to do those, you know, crunches or they even have, you know, the, I think it's an ab shaper or something <laughs> that we can actually use. But this is where a lot of our weight sits right in the midsection. Absolutely. And that middle weight is just so much harder on mm -hmm. our organs. And the pancreas is the organ that's affected by diabetes. And so when we have excess body fat there around that pancreas, it's just harder for it to work. And so that's a risk factor. Um, many different um, risk factors would include high blood pressure, mm -hmm. high cholesterol, um, and also a sedentary lifestyle. We know that people who don't exercise at least 30 minutes a day yeah. are at a greater risk of getting diabetes. Yeah. And I even learned in, in doing my research before this particular program how um, obesity, you know, was ranked high. Mississippi, number one, I think it was West Virginia. Then there was um, Tennessee, South Carolina. And I was just in awe. I'm just like, it, it, it's more the, the, you know, the southern, southern state <laughs> because we love to eat the southern food. You know, the fried chicken, the collard greens, and, and everything that's greasy, which is wonderful. I love to eat it, but I believe that we need to do things in moderation. Absolutely. And so if you're frying the chicken instead of doing the vegetable you know oil or that kind of thing try some olive oil right. um, canola oil or something you know that's um, not gonna be so greasy that you have to wipe your mouth and you know <laughs> that's just a stereotypical because when it's good we have a tendency to do that I remember my mom teaching me that if you if you eat a food and then you can feel greasy in your mouth afterwards it's a fatty food mm -hmm. <laughs> so. and, and sometimes you go to the restaurant and you can actually feel the grease uh, you know in the cleft of your Absolutely. So you know Absolutely. that that's you know unhealthy. We know that when we uh, when we fry a food, mm -hmm. we are dunking it in fat and in grease, and that fat is very hard on mm -hmm. our arteries and on our heart. So what I like to do, you know, we all like the taste of fried chicken. Mm -hmm. So what I love to do is, for instance, take some chicken, roll it in some crushed baked chips. Yes. Baked chips crush them up, or some crushed corn flakes. Mm -hmm. Those are classic. Sometimes I'll roll it in a little sour cream to help it stick, some fat-free sour cream, roll it in some chips, throw it in the oven, mm -hmm. and bake it. And it tastes delicious. You wow. can do the same thing with fish. You could do it with chicken and do chicken strips or pieces of chicken. And it's a way to get sort of that taste, but to really reduce a lot of calories. When you were talking, I was visualizing having some, um, I call it the baked crusted tilapia. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, I love you it. know, with some steamed broccoli and some brown rice. That's a great meal. And our vegetables are another another way. You know, we I talk to people every day and they say, well, I eat greens all the time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, greens are an awesome, healthy vegetable. Yeah. You keep eating them. But... When you add half back and fat back and bacon <laughs> and ham hocks and salt, we're creating a heart attack in a pot. And the hypertension, you know, blood pressure. I have blood pressure problems, and I see so many, you know, women particularly, you know, we have a, a bag full of pills. I have a, a, you know, blood pressure pill. I have, a, a, you know, my insulin. I have, and I'm just like... I don't want to live like that, God. I don't. So every day of my life, and I was in a conversation with my Aunt Daisy, and she said, you don't have to be like that. You know, you can call those things and say, God, no, this will not hit my body. This will not hit my temple. And, and I looked at her and I said, I received that in Jesus' name. I will live long and healthy. I had a grandmother, 98, you know. And there's nothing more exciting. You know, we, we see people who say, I've got high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's saying, I've got to go on medication. Mm -hmm. So I say, Get up, do what your doctor's saying, but then you change that diet. That's and right. And you eat right. That's right. And you exercise, and you give it three to six months, and you go back to that doctor and say, how's my blood pressure now? So real quickly. What is eating right? Most people say, I, I eat right. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I know I eat right. When I eat, I have a lot of energy. So what is eating right, Absolutely. technically? There's a lot of different places you can even go. The MyPyramid, mm -hmm. um, MyPyramid.gov has a great way you can plug in your age and your weight and your height. And it'll give you a correct diet because everyone is supposed to eat a little different, right? Yes. Because every one of us has a different body shape. Mm -hmm. But general principles. When we talk about our breads and grains, we want to go with our whole grain. Yes. So we'll notice when we have our meal that we're about to prepare, because mm -hmm. it's getting, it's getting yes. time for a meal round, yes. getting hungry. 
So when we prepare it, I'm going for whole wheat tortillas. Wonderful. I'm going for whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. I'm going for brown rice instead of white rice. Yes. I'm going for a potato with the skin on it because mm -hmm. the skin is where a lot of nutrients are. Even um, a sweet potato has even more nutrients. So I'm going to go for whole grains. And then next, when I think about my vegetables and my fruits, I'm going to include a variety of colors. Yes. The American plate is fried chicken, mashed potatoes, a biscuit, butter beans, mm -hmm. and corn. It's all white, and it's all starchy foods, right? So what yes. we're going to do is we're going to make a rainbow of colors. Yes. And even today, we've brought, we've got green lettuce, and we've got green bell peppers, and we've got red tomatoes, and red apples and green apples and we've got all different colors yes. of fruits and vegetables because each color represents different nutrition and different nutrition. Yes, and I, I know when I was teaching um, family and um, consumer science, we would teach the students, you can know if you're eating healthy if you have a colorful presentation. Colorful presentation. You know, something red, which, you know, could be your, your chicken or whatever, technically. Or, you know, if you want to have your squash, that's your yellow. Your right. greens, you know, that's your green. And then you have something white, mashed potatoes. But you don't want to do so many starches. Absolutely. But it's just that colorful presentation. It's like, do you have a red, yellow, green on that plate? Or do you just have everything, you know, just green, 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 you know, which you have to have a balance. But we're um, having a few minutes. I want to go back to um, my, my women who are dealing with diabetes yes. because we need to educate them. There are programs that are available um, through Mississippi Health First. Can you tell us a little bit about Mississippi Health First and how um, they can attend these classes and get more information? Absolutely. I'm a diabetes educator working through Mississippi Health First. And basically what it is is it's a program that provides free diabetes education. And we have programs going on all throughout the state. Mm -hmm. So you can call this 866 number yes. and get involved in this free program. So what we're looking for are people with diabetes who want to come and take our free class. Okay. And it's eight modules of what you need to eat. In depth, what you need to eat with diabetes. What you need to do if your blood sugar runs high, if it's yes. low exercise, how to start a program, when to check your feet, when to get your blood pressure checked and your cholesterol checked. We yeah. talk about everything that deals with diabetes and yeah. it's a totally free program. Mm -hmm. And doctor after doctor and a pastors, numerous people have told me, I cannot tell you how important a program like this is mm -hmm. to managing diabetes. So we're looking for people who want to come. Wonderful. And we're also looking for doctors who may be listening to this and say, hey, I have a lot of patients with diabetes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of patients that can be helped by a free class. Wonderful. They could call in and refer patients. Wonderful. Let us advertise. Let me give you that 800 number. It's 1-866-505-2383. If you're interested in these classes that Ellen just, you know, talked about gracefully, please get connected. We're bringing you the information because we, our hearts are just going out to you. You're suffering. You're going through. You don't have to do it alone. There's help. You actually teach some of the classes, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I teach all the ones up in the Golden Triangle. Wonderful. And not only that, Ellen has a cookbook here for you, and it's called Cooking with Ellen. And you can actually purchase this, I believe, on her website. On website. And what is your website? www.cookingwithellen.com. Wonderful, healthy recipes. You don't have to do this alone. And you can tell by her personality, you guys, that she will be going out of her way to cater to you. And just in a few minutes, she's going to show you how to make a healthy meal. We can spend quality time with your family and Definitely. enjoy what you're doing. We're going to do a dessert. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. We're going to take a commercial break. And in this next segment, we're going to be in our kitchen cooking it up with Ellen Easley Wallace. I love you all. Be blessed and we'll see you in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 